This is Math 99, Section 9.1, and we are going to look at systems of linear equations. So um, linear equations are just lines when, just equations that when we graph them, they make lines. And systems would be more than one equations. Uh, so let me give you an example. Uh, if I had, uh, let's say, x plus y equals 7 and x minus y uh, equals negative 1. So notice what I'm looking for. This is that this is a whole system of linear equations, and my solution is going to be an answer for x and an answer for y for both of them. And uh, so what I'm looking for is an x-y pair that makes both these equations true at the same time. Now this isn't the way we're going to solve it, but you could guess and check. Like you could go, I want things that add to seven. So let's try uh, zero and seven. And I notice that 0, 7 works here, but if I try it here, 0 minus 7 doesn't give me negative 1. So that didn't work, so I could try another one. Um, how about 2 and 5? That adds to 7. Uh, 2 minus 5, though, is not negative 1, so that doesn't work. Um, or I could try something that goes here, things that subtract to negative 1. Uh, 5 and 6. You know, 5 minus 6 is negative 1, but if I put it here, they don't add to 7. So I could keep guessing and checking uh, for a long time, depending on if I got lucky or not, or maybe if I had a little bit of insight. So in this one, the answer is, is the 0.34. So I can write it as this, as this ordered pair, or I could say x equals, uh, not y, x equals 3, or y equals, and y equals 4. So I can write my solution this way or this way. Notice it works in both. 3 plus 4 is 7. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So... If I have this algebra issue, I can uh, I can check an answer just by plugging it in. Plug the, this in for x, plug that in for y, make sure it works. Another thing, let's think graphically about this for a second. So I could graph both those lines. So for example, uh, let's see, one of my lines was x plus y is 7. And that's that line right there. And notice that, like, you know, there's a 0.25. I have all these points on here that are solutions. And if I graph the other line, x minus y equals negative 1, there's a bunch of things that make that true. And notice where they cross is that 0.34. It's the solution. So another way I could check solutions on these is to graph them both and find the point where they cross, where the lines cross. This is the xy pair that makes both of these equations true at the same time. That's how you solve the system. So Right now, uh, you, you can see that we have at least one method for solving these, and that is by graphing them. So if we graph them both, we can uh, find a solution to them. Now, that was a convenient you know, way for graphing in Desmos. If I use my graphing calculator to graph these, I need to solve for y. Both of these solve for y. So I want to get y all alone. So on this first one, I would subtract x from both sides. So y equals negative x plus 7. And on this one, uh, it's x minus y equals negative 1. I want y all alone. Um, I don't like the negative y, so I'm just going to add it to both sides. And then I'll add 1 to both sides. So here y equals x plus 1. So let me, let me graph uh, both of those and see what happens. And I'm going to use the graphing calculator for this one. So y equals, get those out of there. So again, I can click on my y equals, and my first equation was negative x plus 7. Then I'll just arrow down to the next one. The next one is x plus 1. And if I hit graph, and my window's kind of funky, I'm going to change my window a little bit. I mean, I can, I can see it there. I'll just go with it. Um, I can hit this trace button, and this will trace it. Look at about where they cross. Looks like it's probably around three, four. It's hard to tell. So one another thing I can do is I can use uh, this calc feature here, calc. And I can say, where do these lines intersect? And I'll uh, choose one of the lines. And I'll choose the second line. 
And then I'll say it's probably about here, find it, and notice it crosses at 3, 4. So I can graph these on my graphing calculator if I, uh, if I get them equal to y. Graph them both and find out where they cross. Great. So let me uh, I'm gonna do some erasing. So here's another one that I want to uh, want to check by graphing. So I have 5x uh, minus 2y equals 10, and x minus y equals negative 1. Let me graph that. Five x minus two y is equal to ten, and x minus y is equal to negative one. There we go. Those cross at the point four five. Four five must be a solution for those. So my solution, I can write it this way as the ordered pair, or I can say x equals four, one y equals five. And notice I can check it by plugging those values in. So if x is four, this top equation would be five times four minus 2 times 5. Does that in fact equal 10? 20 minus 10 is 10. So yes, it works in that equation, and it has to work in this equation as well. x minus y, yeah, that equals negative 1. Both checks out for both of those. All right, here's one more. Let's go ahead and sketch a graph of it. See, uh, see if we can see its solution from the graph. So x minus y equals negative 3. And then y equals 3x plus 5. And I like that because, you know, there's my y-intercept of 5, and it has a slope of 3. And it looks like these cross at the point negative 1, 2. Notice that's the pair, the xy pair, that works on both of them. The xy combination that makes these both true at the same time. That was negative 1, 2. And again, I could check these by plugging them in. Another thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about a different method. So we can solve these by graphing. We also have some algebraic ways to do it. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is... Uh, Substitution. So in substitution, I noticed this, this uh, setup right here is really ripe for substitution because this is solved for y. Y is all alone. The second equation tells me what y is. Y is 3x plus 5. So what I can do is I can substitute that into the y in the other equation. So notice that the first equation is x minus y equals negative 3. This is just like when we're plugging a function in, into a function. Y is this, so it takes the place of Y, 3X plus 5. And the reason why that helps us is now we just have an equation just in one variable. So we can just solve for X and get a value for X. So let's do that, distribute that negative sign. Combine some like terms over here, X minus 3X is negative 2X. Add 5 to both sides. Negative 2x equals 2. Divide by negative 2. Looks like x is negative 1, which we got before. And now the way that I can get the, the y value is by taking this x value and plugging it back into either one of these equations. Whichever one I plug it into, it should give me the same answer uh, because that's what I'm looking for. x is supposed to be the point that gives me the same y in both of them. So I'll, I'll just plug it into this one. x is negative 1, so I need to plug it in. So I have x, which is negative 1, minus y equals negative 3. Add 1 to both sides. Negative y 
is negative 2. Since that's a negative y, I can multiply both sides by negative 1. y is 2. So I get the point uh, negative 1, 2. I can write it as this way, or I can write it as the ordered pair negative 1, 2. So substitution, if, I, if I'm not going to graph it, what I could do is, since I know one of the variables, I can plug it in to the other one. So how does that help me with something like this? Well, I notice that um, neither one of these is solved for a variable, but it's easy for me to, to manipulate it to get it that way. So I notice that like x plus y equals 7, just taking that top equation, that equation 1. And now if I subtract y from both sides here, I get x equals negative y plus 7. So now I know what x is in terms of y. So I can use the substitution. Again, I, I know what x is. It can take the place of x in the other equation. So I have negative y plus 7. That took the place of the x. Minus y equals negative 1. Combine up some like terms. That's negative 2y plus 7 equals negative 1. Subtract 7. Negative 2y equals negative 8. Uh, divide by negative 2. y is 4. And I can plug it back in to get x. If y is 4, x must be 3. So I can write my solution this way, or I can write it as the ordered pair 3, 4. Let me do one more uh, substitution. Uh, 5x plus 4y equals negative 7, and y equals negative 3x. So this one's already solved for y, so it's in a good, good form. I know what y is. y is negative 3. So I can just plug that into there. So my equation now is 5 times x plus 4 times y, but y is just negative 3x, equals negative 7. Let's see, 4 times negative 3, that's a negative 12x. 5 plus uh, or minus 12, I was going to say plus negative 12. 5 minus 12, that's 7. Divide both sides by 7. Looks like x equals negative 1. And now I can get y uh, by taking that negative 1 and plugging it into either equation here or here. It actually looks like a little less work if I plug it into here. y equals negative 3 times x is negative 1. So y would be 3. So when x is 1, y is 3. I can write it that way. I can write it as the ordered pair 1, 3. And I can check it by plugging them both back into here. I could graph the system, see where they cross. A lot of opportunities for um, for checking my solution here. So you notice that these um, these all these answers that we've been getting, they only have one solution, which which makes sense because we have two lines and they, they cross at one spot. So um, when we have these, they're called um, consistent. In other words, they have a solution. So if a if a system is consistent, or if a system has a, a solution, it's consistent. So let's take a look at some possibilities here. So let's say we have uh, 2x plus 3y equals 7, and I'll just come up with another equation here, um, 2x minus 3y equals 5. Whew, can't type. And they cross somewhere. Notice they don't have to cross at whole numbers. It looks like 3 and a third, uh, 3, 1 third is the point where those cross. Those cross just at one point. So what would happen, though, if I turn this into this? So notice these two lines are parallel to each other. These two lines will never cross. So the, it is possible to have a system of equations that has no solution. So there's, there's no solution to that. And this is called an inconsistent system. And it happens when we have parallel lines. So we have these possibilities where we have uh, one solution or no solutions. Can you think of anything else, any other possibility that might, uh, that might give us a different number of solutions? And so take a look at this one, 2x plus 3y equals 7. 4x minus, uh, plus 6y equals 14. And if I graph it, oh, they're the same line. One's right on top of the other one. So there's actually an infinite number of solutions 
to this system. Anything that works here works there because they're the same line. So if they end up being having an infinite number of solutions, um, that is still a type of consistent system, but it's a special type that we call dependent. And we can think of that as the same line. So it's dependent, has an infinite number of solutions, is consistent, no solution. Consistent, it has at least one solution. If it has exactly one solution, we call it um, an independent system that's consistent, but I'm not going to dig down that deep into the vocabulary. There is a uh, third method that I want to talk about, and it's also algebraic. So we have the substitution one, where we substitute in one variable for another. But we have another method that's called elimination. This is also sometimes called the addition method. And it's called the addition method because what we can do is we can add the equations together. So if I just add these equations together, notice what happens here. Um, x plus x is 2x, and this is really nice. y minus y is 0. The y's drop out. 7 minus uh, 1 is 6. So 2x equals 6 divided by 2. It looks like x is 3. Plug it back in. y is 4, and I get that same solution. I personally really like elimination or addition method. Um, it's, it's efficient. It uh, eliminates a variable just like substitution does. It just is a great, great method. Um, so let me, do, let me do another one like this. So here's a system we want to solve. And uh, I notice that I have a negative y and a positive y. So let me just add those equations together and see what happens. Uh, so on the right-hand side, 8 plus 4 is 12. Negative y plus y is 0. x plus 2x is 3x. Divide by 3x is 4. Plug it back in, it looks like y must be 0. So I could write it that way, I could write it as the point or 0. How lovely is that? That is so great. Um, let me do another equation that we did a little bit earlier. 5x minus 2y equals 10, and x minus y equals negative 1. Now notice right now, if I tried to just add these together, I'll change color because I'm going to not really want to do it. Nothing cancels out. The thing about this addition method is it only works if it actually eliminates one of the variables. Like, see, this will give me 6x minus 3y equals 9. That doesn't get me anywhere. So here's what I can do. I can be kind of clever about it, and I can just dream for a second. This is a negative 2y. If this was a positive 2y, when I added them, they would, they would cancel out. So what I can do is I can multiply this equation, both sides of this equation, by something to force this to be a positive 2y. And it looks like it would be negative 2. So I'm going to multiply both sides here by negative 2. And if I do that, notice what I get. My, my top equation, it stays what it is. I didn't, I didn't affect it at all. But this bottom equation, I get negative 2x plus 2y equals 2. And my y's are set to eliminate. Now, I can do this because I'm multiplying both sides of the equation by the same thing. This x minus y equals negative 1 is just a line, and I don't know what direction it has, but it has a certain direction, something like that. When I multiply this line by negative 2, what I'm doing is I'm stretching it in its own direction by a factor of negative 2. So I'm actually stretching it, like I'm flipping it and then stretching it this way, but it maps back onto itself. And since the line is made up of an infinite number of points, it just stretches out and becomes itself again. So I'm really talking about the same line, I'm just talking about it in a different way. Oh, <laughs> look at all those points. So what I can do is I can choose to multiply by something in order to make it so when I do my addition, something will eliminate. So now I'll add. That gives me a 3x. Those go. That gives me a uh, 12. Divide by 3x is 4. I can plug it back in anywhere I want to get the y value. How about I plug it in here? 4 minus y is negative 1. Looks like y must be negative 5. I can write my solution that way. 4 is the ordered pair. 4, negative 5. 
so let's do another example. 3x plus 4y equals 2 and 2x plus 3y equals 1. Now, I'm going to use elimination for this, my addition method, but nothing's real clear. Like if I add out, nothing's going to uh, drop out just quite yet. So I need to make a decision. Should I eliminate x or should I eliminate y? And really, my decision is just mine to make. It Sometimes there's an easier path to take, sometimes not. But I just have to pick, pick in a, to make a decision and go. So I'll just choose y. I'm going to eliminate y. So as I take a look at this, I notice I have a 4y and a 3y. And those both go into 12y. So if I could make one of these a positive 12y and the other one a negative 12y, then when I do my addition, y's will be eliminated. So in order to get that here, uh, I'm going to have to multiply this top equation by 3 and this bottom equation by 4. And notice I'm multiplying both sides by those values. So as I do that multiplication, uh, 3 times 3x is, is 9x. 3 times 4y is 12y. I wanted that to happen. And then 3 times 2 is 6. Right? Both sides of the equation are getting by the 3. I, and in this one, everything's getting multiplied by the 4, so that will be an 8x. That will be a, oh, a negative. So that's a negative 8x. I'm multiplying by negative 4. A negative 12y. And this would be a negative 4. Um, oftentimes, people will forget to do this last multiplication and like leave that as a 1. So that's just something to be really aware of. So now that I've, I've stretched both those lines along themselves, they're the same lines, I can do my addition. And that will eliminate my y values. So 9x minus 8x is x. That's a 0. 6 minus 4 is 2. So x must be 2. So what I can do with that 2 is plug it back in and figure out what y is. I can choose either equation. I'll choose this one. So 2 times 2 plus 3y equals 1. 6 plus 3y. No, that's not 6. 4 plus 3y equals 1. Subtract 4 from both sides. 3y equals negative 3. So y must be equal negative 1. I can write my solution this way. I can write it as the ordered pair 2, negative 1. Next example. 2x plus 6y equals negative 18. And x plus 3y equals negative 9. So I can decide if I'm going to eliminate x or y. Let's eliminate x. Looks easier. This is already 2x. So if I can make this one a negative 2x, those would eliminate when I add them together. So let me multiply both sides of this equation by negative 2. So my top equation stays as it is. 2x plus 6y equals negative 18. And my bottom equation, everything's going to get multiplied by negative 2. So negative 2x minus 6y equals positive 18. And if I go to add these together, something strange happens. Uh, that's a 0. That's a 0. So the left-hand side equals 0. And that's a 0. The right-hand hand side equals 0. 0 equals 0. Well, yeah, it does. <laughs> I mean, it, it feels like a trivial statement. It feels trivial. But it what it is, is it's actually very powerful. It's a true statement. That's always true. So this 0 equals 0 is always true. That What that means is this must always be true. These are the same line. I have an infinite number of solutions. And remember, that's called a dependent system. So if I have an argument and I go through legitimate steps and I end up with something that's always true, that must be me. My premise is always true. Let me graph this and see what it looks like. So the first uh, equation was 2x plus 6y equals negative 18. Oh, I got those caps on. Sorry about that. And the other equation is x plus 3y equals negative 9. And notice they're the same line right on top of each other. 
And the other thing you can see is this is that line times two, right? Like if you double all of these, you get that. They're the same line. So if you ever end up with a statement that's always true, zero equals zero or five equals five, all the variables are dropped out. It means we have an infinite number of solutions. All right, let's do another one. 3x plus 2y equals 1. Negative 3x minus 2y equals 5. And it looks like things are set to cross right out, like y's will drop right out if I do addition. They'll be eliminated. So let me add them together and see what happens. 3x minus 3x is 0. Ah, we get this 0 again. But over here, we get 6. Okay, so we end up with a statement that is false. I mean, that should make you a little uncomfortable that that's like the answer to a math problem. 0 equals 6, because it doesn't equal 6. So, similar argument to last time. We started with a statement, a premise. We went through a, an argument, and we ended up with something that's never true. It means there must be something wrong with our premise. What this means is there's no solution. This is an, incon uh, this is an inconsistent system. These lines are parallel to each other. If you write it this way, you can write it as the empty set. Empty set is like a circle with a line through it. Those both mean there's no solution. Let's graph them both. Okay, take a peek at the graphs, see what they look like. There's 3x plus 2y equals 1. And here is negative 3x minus 2y equals 5. Parallel lines, they will never cross. And you can see it in the system, whereas like the left-hand side is just this times negative 1, but the right-hand side is not that times negative 1. So they'll be parallel to each other, but not in the same spot, in different positions. There is one more type of problem that I'd like to... Uh, I'd like to demonstrate. So sometimes we could have a system that looks like this. 1 half x plus 1 third y equals 2 thirds. Uh, 2 thirds x plus 2 fifths y equals 14 fifths. Now, dealing with these fractions is a bear. Like, that's a lot of computation to have to do a lot of work. Now, you don't have to do this. But I think it's a really clever first step to eliminate those fractions. So just like when we are solving rational expressions, we, we, we multiply by something to wipe out the whole fraction. Let's do that here, too. And so looking at this first equation, my denominators are 2 and 3. Multiply that whole thing by 6. And in the second equation, 3 and 5 and 5. So I think that I will... Uh, multiply by 15. And I'm actually going to cheat. I'm actually going to go back because um, I meant for this to be a 15, not a 5. Sorry about that. All right, so let's do this. Multiply this one by 6. So 6 times a half is 3. So I have 3x. 6 times a third is 2. 2y. 6 times a third, uh, times 2 thirds is 4. 2 thirds times 15, that goes into that 5 times is 10. Uh, 2 fifths times 15, that goes into that 3 times is 6. And then 15 times 15 is 1, so that's a 14. So now, by doing that, I turn this into a system that is easier for me to deal with. I can get at it with elimination. And I notice this is a 6y, so if I could turn that into a negative 6y, when I add, they'll cancel. So now I'll multiply this whole equation by negative 3. So I'm just going to rewrite my, my second equation because it doesn't get changed. And now I'll multiply this by negative 3. So negative 9x, negative 6y. And remember, that gets it to negative 12. Now it's all set to use addition to lead to eliminate the y's. So negative 9x plus 10 is x. Those eliminate. Um, and then I have negative 12 plus 14 is 2. So it looks like x is 2. Now I can take this value and I can plug it into any of the equations along the way. I can plug it back into the fractions equations. I think it'll be the least amount of work to plug it into this one. So I will do that. 3 times 2 plus 2 times y equals 4. So 6 plus 
2y is 4, subtract 6 from both sides. 2y is negative 2, so y must be negative 1. I can write my answer this way. Or it is the ordered pair, 2, negative 1. Uh, work on these. Practice elimination, practice substitution, and send me any questions that you have.